Hi everyone, I'm Coach Alex and welcome to video number two in our Beam Basics training video. If you have not seen video number one, I have put a link down in the description below uh, and you want to hop over there and watch that one before you watch this one because we will be discussing some clips uh, and talking about some of our good and bad coaching habits that we need to pay attention to when we're on the coaching floor. So we're starting off with clip number one um, and this is one of the bad clips, one of the ones we don't want to look like, and unfortunately we do see this quite frequently, where the coach is leaning on the equipment, playing with their hair, uh, and the kids are just on the beam, sort of just taking turns with no corrections being given, no demonstrations being given. Um, they're just kind of going back and forth, not accomplishing anything, because there's no learning going on. I mean, all the coach is doing is, is telling them what to do, and then kind of just standing there until they've gone all the way across the beams and are ready for the next uh, exercise. So we really want to avoid this at all costs. Stand up, get off the equipment, coach your kids. This is clip number two, uh, and this is how coaching should be done during Beam Basics. I'm up, I'm moving around, I'm gesturing, I'm talking to the kids, giving corrections, encouraging them, um, and then as soon as they're done, I'm ready with the next skill that we'll be doing. Um, and we're talking about straight legs, stand up tall, hands on hips, uh, and having and taking productive turns. You can see even when I'm correcting a mistake or something that the student's doing wrong, I'm still very upbeat, very positive. I'm not just saying, get your legs straight, or fix this, or fix that. Uh, it's upbeat, it's positive, it's encouraging, um, which, is, which makes it more fun for both you and the student. This is clip number three. Uh, once again, we've got the coach leaning on equipment, not up with the kids, giving corrections. Now, we're doing levers, and I want to specifically talk about levers because this is a very easy, basic skill uh, to go up there and spot and correct. You can see the kids just going across the beam, not doing it right, not making corrections, and the coach is just standing there letting it happen. So there's no learning going on, uh, there's no progress being made, and there's really no point to doing this because it's not bettering their gymnastics. Now this is levers again. Uh, and this is the way that we should be teaching them. So before they even start, I'm talking about starting in a lunge, talking about how the lever works, um, making corrections, but also being very, very engaging and not being super boring um, when giving these instructions. I'm demonstrating and being loud and asking them for input. Um, and we don't take too much time doing that. I go over quickly a few, a few things uh, and then they're going. So immediately, uh, my hands are on the kids, I'm spotting them, I'm giving corrections, I'm making sure they're doing it correctly, um, I'm bouncing from one kid to another. When you have two teachers like this, um, it's a lot easier to do this because turning your back to one beam isn't as big of a deal because you know that the other teacher is, is watching that beam, they're in her line of sight. Um, when you're by yourself, you really want to make sure that you never turn your back to the kids um, and everyone is in your line of sight at all times. So when doing that one, you might want to have everyone uh, just go on two beams um, or have them snake through the beams and spot the first beam so you're still looking at everyone else while they're going. This is clip number four, and this is one of those sort of in-between clips where there are some good things going on, but there are also some bad things going on. So I'm giving, I gave a demonstration of what I want to see and there are corrections being given. The problem here is both coaches are standing, leaning against the equipment. Uh, there's no spotting, there's no hands-on going on. Even in these kicks, you should be up there poking at their knees, making sure their hands are in the right place, walking through the beams. This is not a stationary exercise that they're doing here. You and them should be very, very engaged with what's going on. And there's corrections, so that's good. Uh, but again, all you're doing is yelling across the beam area. Uh, for a kid to really understand a correction, you need to be right next to them with your hands on them, showing them what needs to be fixed. Okay, clip number six. We're talking about what we're going to do. I'm explaining what the arm pattern is for the jumps. Uh, I've given corrections, but in a fun, playful manner, so it's not like this big 
disciplinary thing that's going on. It, it's fun. Fixing gymnastics and doing good gymnastics should be enjoyable for everybody. So as I give corrections, I'm demonstrating what I want to see. If I want their arms tight, I put my arms tight. I show them the difference between what they're doing and what I want to see. I'm poking them in the legs. And even when my hands aren't on the kids, I'm still gesticulating. I'm moving my body around. I'm still very active. So they don't want to look around the gym. They want to look at me, their coach, to know what's going on. Lots of good jobs, lots of encouragement. Uh, it should be a very, very positive experience for everybody. So when watching this clip, um, we're going to go through it once where I don't say anything, but I want you guys to pay attention to what it sounds like um, because there are a lot of moments where you can hear the conversation between me and Angela going on. There are a lot of moments where it's just dead silent. Uh, which is not how gymnastics class is supposed to be. It's supposed to be constant talking, constant movement, constant corrections, constant uh, interacting. So just pay attention to what you're hearing in this clip, what you're not hearing, and what you should be. Going back to this part, uh, you can hear the girls giggling, goofing around, not really paying attention to what they're doing, and it's because you're not giving them anything to pay attention to. Um, so to prevent this, to prevent kind of this chaos going on with everyone flinging themselves off the team and giggling and laughing and stuff like that and not paying attention, you have to be the one to hold their attention. So if they're giggling and laughing, it should be something that you said, something that you're okay with them doing, um, and you should keep control of the class, because right now, it's completely out of control. And here we have a student doing something that you haven't told them to do. They're jumping around on the beam. They could kick someone. They could fall and hurt themselves. They won't know what's going on around them. Um, in a class that's being properly run, that wouldn't happen because number one, you would notice them and immediately, oh, stand up, please. We're almost gonna. Do, we're about to do something else. Uh, and number two, they're not standing there long enough to think, hmm, let me go do this weird thing, uh, because they're always constantly moving. So this is a clip I wanted to add in because when you listen to this one, I am constantly talking, I'm constantly communicating, moving around. Um, and if you pay attention, just listen to it, uh, you never don't hear my voice. Uh, constant positive reinforcement. Uh, the kids know that I'm paying attention to them. Uh, spotting. If I'm not spotting, I'm pointing and gesticulating and making it fun to pay attention to, interacting with the kids constantly. There is not a moment where I'm not talking to one of these kids. There's not a moment where I'm just standing there watching. Because if I'm just standing there watching, there's no teaching going on. So the difference between this clip and the previous clip is like night and day. Suddenly the kids are listening to me, they're paying attention to me, they're thinking about their gymnastics. Uh, they're getting spotted, they're getting corrections made, uh, and they're having fun. This clip is much more fun than the previous one that we watched. The previous one was just kind of dead, um, and you never want your class to feel like that. You want your class to constantly have high energy, be engaging, be focused, be doing something productive. So the big things that we need to focus on when doing beam basics, uh, make sure you're up, you're moving, you're interacting, you're correcting, you're encouraging, uh, you're never standing still. Um, 
Also make sure that while you're doing all of this, it's focused towards the exercise that you're doing. Don't let things get too off the rails and too distracted. Uh, keep it focused, but also keep it fun and engaging. And Beam Basics will be a lot more productive for the class and you'll be able to move on faster to other skills that they need to be developing. I would also like to point out that if you're a white level class with only a 15 minute rotation on Beam, this should not be all that you're doing. This should maybe take like five minutes and then the rest of the time should be spent developing skills. Uh, blue class is maybe half and half because you have a 30 minute rotation, maybe, but it shouldn't just be Beam Basics. It should always maybe start with that for the warm up, uh, but then move on to, to developing skills. So let's try and make sure that our Beam Basics are always fun and engaging. So we'll be back soon with more videos and hopefully we'll keep learning and improving as staff members here at Lone Star Gymnastics.